You're with the Newsmakers. We are with Christchurch Mayor Bob Parker. Just before we look at um, some draft annual plan matters, public transport is light rail and your passion for a light rail network in Christchurch going to form a key part of your campaign? Well, look, it's already out there. Uh, I think in terms of some of our council thinking, we're looking at what we call tram trains now because light rail was pretty confusing for a lot of people. Uh, but I, I am very strongly of the view that we need to begin planning for a uh, rail-based street-level public transport system in addition to our buses in Christchurch. Mm. And uh, we've already done some work on looking at, for example, our, our transport interchange. And one of the reasons that we particularly want it below ground is that we can have street-level rail connections as well. And if you think about its location and where those rails could, co could come off of uh, around Lincoln Road and so on, yeah. So it is part of my campaign, I guess, just because uh, it's not something new, it's something that I've long advocated for. And, and I will really continue to advocate for it. Is full control of public transport mm. uh, fundamental mm -hmm. to delivering a light rail network? Uh, well, I think it will be part of that. I mean, there's got to be a better way to run public transport than we're currently doing. And we've got it spread across two local government organisations. So my view is there should be one organisation that controls public transport. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be the City Council or Environment Canterbury. It could be a separate authority that would actually be handling public transport in the city. Okay. But we do need to bring it together. We do need to integrate it. It's costing us extra money having two organisations. I'm not happy with the way yeah. that buses are being funded and uh, so certainly it's something I would like to see some change around. If the City Council had full control, just very quickly, do you agree with the theory that you would have to sell red bus? Well that's been raised as an issue. Um, I think you probably could avoid selling red bus. Uh, I think there are a number of ways that that could be done. Okay. But you know, if, it, if and when that becomes an issue, we have talked about it, uh, the, the first thought was, yeah, you will. Mm. But as we've looked at it more carefully, there would be a possibility of not doing that. But right. look, it's, that's a ways to go yet. The draft annual plan is now open for public submissions. Mm -hmm. um, keeping rates affordable has been a hallmark of your mayoralty. Mm -hmm. The council is proposing this year's average rates rise to be 3.96%. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be churlish, mm -hmm. but that has doubled the rate of inflation. Is mm -hmm. that on the nose? Well, when you think of the way that, yeah, I mean, if I'd done 10%, and you would have said, well, you know, 5% will be good. The fact is that we hit it at 4%. And originally I said, well, I want to try to get the rates that, that would never crest 5%. Yeah. With the recession, we managed to get them down to below 4 And that's our average rate increase for the next 10 years. It would ni be nice to be just at inflation. But the reality of uh, life is that the inflation level that you and I measure at home mm -hmm. has got very little to do with the inflation impacts that hit the sort of stuff that we do as a council. Okay. So, you know, Whitbix, cornflakes, aspirin uh, and, and loo paper, they're part of the CPI, but council doesn't buy as much of those things. It does tend to buy a lot of oil-based products, concrete reinforcing pipes, a lot of heavy-duty industrial building materials. Their uh, rate of inflation is high. Parking meter charges are not being touched this year. Mm. Why not? Um, I, I guess it's to do with the fact that when you we've got a policy in place that tends to increase those at an inflation rate, uh -huh. and because of the coinage in New Zealand, there are some years where you just grin and bear and you take a lesser income rather than have a larger increase. So well, the I think it's connected to that. Frankly. Oh, I see. Well, I read in the annual plan, the draft mm. annual plan. Quote, because of economic conditions, the council is not proposing a change to parking fees. Mm. Now that's fine, but why then did you ratchet them up last year when arguably economic conditions were in a far more parlous state? Yeah. Well, I think you have a bit of an option because the first thing we do is to recover costs. That's, that's the intention of parking charges mm -hmm. and to fund those on-street things that we do. I think that this year we can take a little bit less money and make a catch-up in a year or two down the track. So that was the intention. But it was connected to, from memory, getting sort of cents that don't line up because if you're using a parking meter you're limited to kind of round numbers All so right. I think that was also part of the rationale. I see. Let's look at the spat concerning these 11 early learning centres mm -hmm. operating out of council owned buildings. Now for more, for more than a decade mm -hmm. the council has provided grants to cover these the centres rent. That's yep. correct. They're now concerned that the council won't provide a direct grant to offset the new increased rents, and $54,000 seems to be the sticking point. Mm. Can you promise those centres who serve the highly disadvantaged mm. 
they will not be worse off as a result of these funding changes. Well, that's always been my view. and uh, the... They won't be worse off. No, if they don't, if their circumstances are unchanged, remember mm -hmm. when they went into this, they went into it with a clear subsidy and a clear set of costs subsidised in effect by using community property. Yep. Now we've got a responsibility to our community to ensure that everybody who is taking advantage for the best reasons of community owned property is in a position of need and that need continues. If it doesn't, if they're in a much better financial position, there may well be uh, a reason for, to expect them to pay a little bit more money. But if their need is as great as it was before, in other words, if they still require that subsidy, because some of the rents I think have gone down as well, uh, then they will still get an appropriate level of subsidy. So the intention is not to disadvantage these centres. The intention is to honour our relationship with our ratepayers and citizens, that we are managing these processes. Mm. We're charging a market rent. We're more than prepared to offset that rent with a grant. Uh, if but the you're need 54K still exists. short of the centre's full rent. Oh, it's not a problem. I mean, we can find that money from our um, grants budgets without much trouble. That is a commitment you're making now? Yeah, absolutely. If they still need all of that money, okay. then they'll still get it. But look, you know, one of the centres at one point anyway indicated that they might be interested in buying their own premises or even buying the premises that they are currently in. So not all of their circumstances are exactly the same as when they went in. But I do think this has been a political beat-up okay. from people who <laughs> Uh, like to be able to maintain the line that this is somehow a heartless, uncaring council. Well, to play devil's advocate, mm. um, why the hell is the council involved in these types of facilities? Why are we subsidising early learning centres? Well, is, this, is this really the business of local government? Well, there's always an argument around that. We're not arguing that. We're okay. simply saying that we do have strategies and policies and outcomes that we've all agreed upon as a community. And early learning centres and the support of uh, learning and education is one of the key things for this council to focus on and we're involved in it in all sorts of ways across the city. Okay. And the simple message that I've got to send here is look, please don't panic. If your need is as great, if you still need that assistance, you're still going to get it. That is a commitment. The 54k is well, I'm, a commitment. I, I, you know, I'm, the 54k may or may not be needed. There may be more needed. Right. I think that's a problem for the council. But they will the not day. be worse off. That is my that view. That is your commitment. That is my view. Unless we've got a situation where someone has a pile of cash in the bank and they're not doing anything with that. All right. But it's not going to be, oh, you've got money in the bank, we don't give you anything. <laughs> it's like, you know, what are your plans? What are your processes? What support do you need? Your rent will go up a bit. Are you able to afford that? If All you right. can't, fine. We'll put the grant back in. But we want Ready. to manage the process. We will run through a few other issues shortly, sure. including Edgeware, Ellerslie and other matters. Do stay with us.